Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate the privilege of being in the house of the Lord this morning and to know that we can give all our difficulties to God. Have you ever been in a church service and the preacher's preaching and he's telling you to give all your battles to God and you're sitting there like, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I'm still dealing with this. I'm still dealing with that. And I know I can give it to God, but I'm not truly ready to surrender it all yet. <laughs> But, you know, really, that's how freedom comes when you, when you can learn to turn things over to God. You know, we learn from Jesus on the cross. He said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. You know, he knew there came a time where he had to just turn it over to the Father and let the Father handle it all. And so, you know, whatever that's. All right. I want to read to you this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 44. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth in, on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division, there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. I want to use verse 37 as our text where it said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Using that as our text, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And with the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach on a message entitled, Thirsty souls. Thirsty souls. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Marvin, would you please pray this morning? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that's present. Father, let us stay focused as pastor ministry word. Father, let us take this message applied to our life and do all things pleasing. And this I give you all the honor and glory. God bless the message and the, the message and the messenger. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Just a short while this morning, hopefully. <laughs> I want to preach about thirsty souls. And if there is one thing I can clearly relate to in this passage of Scripture, how Jesus you know, was dealing with these people here in the temple, is how people respond to God. Because I do talk to people about God. I invite people to church and witness to them and different things. And you get a different response from every every different every, Body respond differently. Some are glad, <laughs> some are mad, some just brush you off, some are not interested, and different things. And, and then you find some of them that are tender and are thirsty for God, some that are preoccupied with their life and all the demands the life has to bring upon them, and some really have, they don't really want to entertain the thought of God in their life. And so when I, when I look at this, this Bible verse or this passage of scripture, we see that Jesus here was at the temple, the Feast of Tabernacle, I think it was, that was going on at that time. It was an eight-day celebration. And so he went through seven days at the temple with the people. They were worshiping. They were praying. They were going through all this um, ritualistic thing that the law and uh, their tradition dictates. But then the Bible said on the very last day of the feast, the final day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he cried, or he lifted up his voice very loud, saying, If any man thirst, 
let him come unto me and drink. And it kind of spoke to my heart Friday when, I was, when this message came to my, to my mind. Is, you know, God really, he loves everybody. He died for the entire world. He cared about every soul of men and women. He said, it's not the will of God that any perish, but that all come to repentance. And that God loved the entire world, but yet we find that it's only those who are thirsty for him that can receive something from him. It's only those who have a thirst for God, those who, and that's what he said there. With all these people in the temple, he said, if any man thirst, let him come. Right? He could have said, hey, come on, everybody, come to me. I got something for you. But he didn't do that. He just lifted up. The invitation to all the people, multitude of people that were there. And he said, if you are truly thirsty for God, for, your, for a relationship with God, for the truths of God, for the wisdom of God, for the peace of God, for the goodness of God in your life. He said, if you are thirsty, come and I will give you what you need. And so I want to use that and preach about thirsty souls. These are the kind of people that will receive things from God. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be a thirsty soul. God, I want to be thirsty for you. I want to be hungry for you. I want more of you in my life. I know there's so many things in the world, but give me Jesus. He is the answer to everything in my life, and he can meet every need in my life. And so I want to talk about thirsty souls. Is your soul thirsty for God? I hope it is. I'm just preaching. You, have, you decide, right? Amen. We all got to get that thirst in our heart. And you know, I, as a preacher, like I said, I always love to challenge us, myself, all of us, to draw closer to God, right? To draw closer to God. I know it's simple, <laughs> but Paul said, don't deviate from the simplicity that is in the gospel. That's when errors come along. That's when heresies come into the church. Is when we deviate from the simplicity of the things that God gave us. And so I always challenge myself and all of us and whoever is listening online, draw closer to God. Right? Draw closer to God. You see, the Bible tells us it's our personal faith that will make us overcomers in everything in life. Right? It's our personal faith in God. And the Bible also shows us that when we are close to God, our faith is much stronger. Remember when um, Jesus was in the garden right before they arrested him? The apostle Peter was there, and he had a sword in his hand, and they came to arrest him. And you know what he did, right? He was bold. He whipped out that sword, and he was ready to fight. Right? He, was, he, he went for that guy's head, and he missed. <laughs> he got his ears. He cut off his ears. Right? And he was close to Jesus. Jesus was right there. He was close to Jesus. He was bold. He was ready to lay his life down the line. He had all faith. But you know what happened as they arrest Jesus and took him into the judgment hall? Peter was separated from him. He wasn't as close to him at that point. Right? And then a damsel, a young lady, came to him and said, You are this man's disciple also. No, I'm not. <laughs> he became a coward. He wasn't close to Jesus any longer. And his faith wasn't strong enough. Another one came and said, oh, you're this man's disciple. No, 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 I don't know this man. Never, never seen him in my life before. <laughs> and then another one, he realized, wait a minute, they're not going to stop asking me. And so he started to curse and to swear and to say, I know not the man. All the while, Jesus was looking at him. Remember that? The Bible said the Lord turned and looked at him. And when he saw the Lord, he went out and wept bitterly. But you see, there was something he wasn't close to God. And so that's the reason why I always challenge each and every one, myself, all of us, get close to God. Amen. Get close to God. The closer you are to the Lord, the stronger your faith will be and the more of an overcomer you will be. Amen. And if you don't understand it by now, Satan will bring everything he can against you to try to, to get you away from that closeness in your relationship. It's up to you. But what ha it comes with this thing also, to be close to God is, you have to have a thirsty soul. Amen. You got to have that thirsty soul. God, I just want you. 
God, I just want you. I want you in my life. I want more of you. I, I know I, I go through and I, I have all these things in my life. I have my prayer life, my Bible reading life, my worship life, and all these things. But God, I'm just thirsting for more. I'm longing for more. I want more of God. I want to be closer to you because I know that closer to you is where the blessing really is. Amen? And so thank God that we can have that kind of a desire to be close to God, to draw closer to God. And so in the Bible reading, like I said, he made it clear on whom God reaches out to the most. Like I said, he cared about everybody. But here in this situation, Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come. Amen. The invitation went out to, hey, I'm talking to all of you. But if you are thirsty, come to me. If you are thirsty, I can supply what you need. If this religious thing is not helping you, if you're still struggling with things in your heart, in your mind, if you don't find peace in your life, only God can give you those things. Amen. No preacher can give you peace. He can preach to you. He can teach you. He can show you the way. But it's up to me and up to you this morning to reach out to God and get what we need. Amen. Jesus is the answer for our soul. And so he said, if any man thirsts, let him come. These are the ones that God can help because they see the need. It's not that God, I was listening to, who was it, Richard Dawkins or whatever it is, you know, the great atheist or whatever, you don't believe in God or anything like that. But you're thinking about, he's talking about how God is, you know, he's not a God of love and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, man, <laughs> God hasn't judged you yet. He have all power. I don't know if he's there or alive, I don't know if old, whatever, whatever it was. But you are up here speaking all this nonsense about God. You're lying about God. You're deceiving people. You're leading people astray. And God hasn't struck you down yet. That's love. <laughs> he can do it. He could do it if he want to. But that's just love. Amen. That's just love. But the reason why he can't have it and the reason why any atheist in the world can't find God is because they don't have a thirst for him. Amen. The reason why the people, there's so many people out there in the world today, all over the world, all every continent, the reason why they can't find God is not because God is hidden, right? It's because they don't have a true thirst for God. God is reaching out. Think about the love of God that he will put it in the heart of a man and a woman, say from America or say from uh, some other country, and he will send them into a desert or, or into a jungle somewhere to carry the gospel, to be missionaries and to share God's love with people. That's, a, that's love, amen? That's God reaching out to put it in the heart of a man and a woman to lay down their life to go into a foreign nation to where they don't know anybody and to share with them the love of God and yet the people will not respond to it it's because they do not have a thirst for God amen they don't have a thirsty soul even us today we go out into the byways the highways I talk to people invite people to church tell them about God the love of God and I don't know I mean I'm just giving them an invitation but they don't have a thirst for it they don't have that thirsty soul. And they were, why is my life such a mess? Why is this not working out? Why is all these things, there's no, tr why is my relationship all messed up? My marriage is messed up. My children are messed up. The country is messed up. Why is all this messed? Is it God's fault? Absolutely not. Amen. I'm here to testify God knows how to put life together. Amen. I'm here to testify this morning that when a person have God in their life, there can be peace. There can be blessings. There can be joy. There can be happiness. There can be fulfillment. There can be a true, genuine purpose in our heart. But why is it such a mess that we live in such a messed up world? And y'all know it's true. We live in a messed up world. Our community is messed up. Even some of our family members are messed up. Friends are messed up. Why is it? Is it our fault? I don't think so. We try to reach out to them. We pray for them. We get on our knees and call on God to help them. It's not us. It's because they do not have a thirsty soul. They don't want to thirst for God. They, would not, they don't want anything to do with God. As he said there, when God reaches out to them, he said, many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying said, of a truth, this is that prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some of them said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? <laughs> right? You see, everybody have a different response. Jesus asked the question to the apostles. He said, who do men say, I, the son of man am? He said, some of them say, you're Elias. Some say you are this prophet. Some say you are John the Baptist. 
And then he said, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona's flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father which is in heaven. And so I'm talking about thirsty soul, the invitation. Anyone that is thirsty, come. God is not a respecter of person. You say, preacher, there's some things in my life that I, that I need God's attention. The invitation is for you. Come to God, not to me. I can pray for you, but God is the one that can help you. Amen? God is the one that can help you. The response has to be right. He said, if any man thirst, let them come unto me and drink. Come unto me and drink. Not just come and say, oh, uh, that's some good water right there, Lord. Uh, I don't want any. Have you been there? People are thirsty. People are hungry. I'm starving. I'm hungry. And they walk up to the table and they see some food. No, I don't want any of that. You just said you were starving. Right? You just said you're hungry. There's food. Eat it. I don't want that. That's the way some people are with God, you know. I'm starving. I'm hungry. There's some emptiness in my soul. Well, God said, come to him and drink. Right? Come to him and drink. We got to be thirsty for that living water. We got to be thirsty for that living water. That's the living water that will quench the thirst in our life. It will quench the thirst in our soul. You know, in in the Gospel of John or still in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, Jesus met that woman at the well, and he began to have a conversation with her. And evidently, she was thirsty for something better in her life, spiritually, something better in her life. And the Bible said to, Jesus said to her in John 4, verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who is it that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, he said, Thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee, what? Living water. Folks, we got to get thirsty for some living water. Amen. We got to get thirsty. You say, preacher, I have a lot of living water. Hey, get thirsty. You got to give me some more. Amen. You have an appetite, he will fill it. Amen. You have the appetite for it, God will give it to you. And then he went on there also in verse 13 of John. He said, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of the water, of this water shall thirst again. If you drink of the things of the world, he said, you will thirst again. Because those things are just temporary. Right? They're just for us to enjoy, and but they don't bring true satisfaction. We all know that. He said, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is what every one of us need, living water from God. Amen. And it comes by the Spirit. It's a close, he said, this spake he of the Holy Ghost. As he said in our Bible reading, he said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth in me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. So what's that living water? The Spirit of God. What do I need? The Spirit of God. What is the answer to my life? The Holy Ghost. He said the Holy Ghost wasn't given at that point because Jesus didn't fulfill his mission to die, rise again, and head back to heaven. Once he went back to heaven, guess what? He poured out the Holy Ghost. Amen. He sent the Comforter. He sent the Spirit of Truth. He sent the One that will lead us in all truth. He sent the One to help us to come beside. Paracletus in the Greek means aid. The Holy Ghost is here to help us. Amen. He's not going to do our work, but He will help us. He's not going to pray for us, but He's going to help us as we pray. He's not going to believe for us, but He's going to help us as we believe. He's not going to worship for us, but as we begin to worship, the Spirit of God will help us. And so we need the living water. Amen. But you got to get thirsty. Every one of us, we got to a thirst for the Spirit. We got a thirst. This Spirit is what we need. We need more of the Spirit of God in our life. We need the Spirit of God to work through us, pray through us, speak through us, guide us, lead us. We got to get thirsty for this living water. Amen? This is what will quench the thirst in our life. Money is not going to do it. Thank God for money. How many of you all can use some money? Right? We all can use it. How many of you have been making money all your life or for many, many years? It hasn't fixed all your problems yet, right? 
So money is good, thank God for it. It's a means to an end, but it's not going to fix it. You know, your husband's not going to fix all your problems. You say, he's my problem, preacher. <laughs> your husband might say this to anybody. Why? She's all my problem. I still remember this one guy. It's a little cartoon thing. Yeah, I told it before. Preacher said, this Sunday, special Sunday, bring all your problems to God. Bring it to church. And he shows this picture of this guy with a basket on his head and his wife in the basket heading to church. <laughs> this is all my problem, preacher. <laughs> They shouldn't be that way. You know, we're a team. Amen. We're a team. We work together as a team. You say, what is the marriage all about? 50-50? How many believe marriage is 50-50? Your marriage is going to fail if it's 50-50. Amen. Your marriage has to be 100-100. Amen. You got to be 100-100. Husband got to give 100. Wife got to give 100. If the wife can't give 100, then the husband got to give 110. Amen. We got to work as a team. We got to make a picture. Our husband may come from work. I'm tired. I can only give 50%. Wife got to pitch in and give 150. Amen. Wife may be sick and down. King, I can give her 20% this day. Husband got to give 180. I was doing dishes yesterday. Amen. I was cleaning the house. I was helping my wife out because she's my she's a teacher, preacher wife, mother, everything, taking two or two kids. I don't mind cleaning the house. Amen. All right, she do it, but I don't mind doing it. I do the dishes if I have to. I clean up. I, I mean, we work together as a team. It's a hundred, hundred. Amen. You want your marriage to be blessed? Give a hundred percent, both people. You do, <laughs> you do fifty fifty. It's not gonna work. Amen. Give a hundred percent every time. Help each other out. Both of you all get a paddle and paddle in the same direction. <laughs> Amen. Don't try to fight each other and go in every. I don't even know what I'm talking about. All that. Y'all know more about marriage than I do. <laughs> but it have to be a teamwork, amen? I mean, where did I come from? <laughs> I don't have no clue. <laughs> but take it. It's really 100-100. Help each other out, amen? Because your, your wife is not going to always be able to give 100%. Help her out. Her husband is not always going to be able to give 100%. Pitch in there. That's where teamwork comes in, amen? And work together, and God can bless your marriage successfully. Your life, all together. Oh, I was talking about wives and problems, husband. Okay, that's where it came from. <laughs> right? But you have all these things, cars. I mean, you own cars and everything. They don't solve all your problems. They're a blessing. So I'm saying this morning is we need that living water. We need that living water. That's the, that's the answer to everything. You see, when you have peace on the inside, when you have joy on the inside, when you have happiness on the inside, you have fulfillment on the inside, and that's what the Spirit of God will give you, then when all the other things come from the, from the outside, it's not going to mess with you. Now, it's going to come against you, but Jesus said, your house will stand because it's built upon the rock, right? And so you need that living water. We've got to hunger and thirst for the living water. We've got to also thirst for the truths of God. Truth, the Bible says, what sets us free, what gives us a solid foundation, a foundation that cannot be shaken. You see, lies are depressing. Lies will disappoint and lies will catch up. The Bible talked about those who made lies their refuge, their trust in lies, but eventually that will fail. We have to trust in the truth. God wants to give us truth. God will, he said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth will satisfy your soul. Truth will bring peace and joy and happiness to your life. As he said to us in the, the Beatitude, he said, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness. Righteousness is truth. Amen. Righteousness for they shall be filled. When you're thirsty for, I'm talking about a thirsty soul. All right? You got to have a thirsty soul for these things. Jesus looked at this multitude of people. And he said, only those that are thirsty come. Right? He said, only those that are thirsty come. Because only those are the ones I can do something for. And so he looked at this multitude of people. He said, if any man thirst, let him come. And so the message is this morning is a thirsty soul. We got to have that thirsty soul. When you have a thirsty soul, God can help you. When you have a thirsty soul, God can fill you. He can quench the thirst in your life. And we have to stay thirsty. We have to stay also thirsty for heavenly things. I'm just going to read this passage of scripture to you. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Just something we can meditate on. In Colossians chapter 3, 
I'm talking about thirsty for the spirit, the living water, thirsty for the truth, thirsty for heavenly things. You've got to have a thirsty soul for heaven. He said, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of on the earth. Right? So he said, get thirsty for heaven. Amen. Amen. Get thirsty for heavenly things. Just set your affection not on things on the earth. God will give you the things on the earth. Did he not tell us that? Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. And his what? Righteousness. And what he said? All these necessity things, God said he will provide it. Food, clothing, and shelter, he will provide. And he said you walk uprightly before him, he will give you the desires of your heart. He said you delight yourself in him, no good thing will he be told from them, right? Or he said no good, he will give you the desires of your heart if you walk uprightly before him, or you delight yourself in him. You walk uprightly, he said he will not be told any good thing from you. God will give you the good things of this life because he knows these things are just temporary. You can't take it to heaven. <laughs> Right? The Bible said, if a man labor, let him enjoy the fruit of his labor. He said, that is your reward. Right? That is your reward to enjoy the fruit of your labor because you don't know what tomorrow brings. Amen? And so God said, enjoy the fruit of your labor. It is a blessing from the Lord. And so we have, but we have to get thirsty for heavenly things. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, affection, evil concupiscence, evil desires and behaviors, and covetousness. And listen to the way he talked about covetousness. He said, which is idolatry. Amen? So when we set our, our affection and devotion on things on this earth, it becomes an idol. He said, covetousness is idolatry. Right? He said, which is idolatry? For which things sake... The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off these, anger, wrath, wrath is venting out of your anger, malice, that's ill will and, uh, and, and, and evil and vengeance and evil against other, blasphemy, speaking blasphemous things against God and godly things. The Word of God, the Spirit of God, those kind of things. Filthy communication out of your mouth. I would think we can throw cursing and stuff and swearing and stuff in there, right? I mean, it's Bible, isn't it? Right? Filthy communication out of your mouth. And it, and it tells you where it's coming out. <laughs> right? Filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 9, he said, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So that's a little bit of meat for you to chew on. I'm not going to even dwell on that. It's a Bible. You can read it for yourself. I want to talk about thirsty. So we got to get thirsty for these things. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come. Where's my bill? If any man thirst, let him come. The invitation, if you notice how he presented it, he said they were all there at the temple. But he said, the only one I can help are those that are thirsty. The only one I can heal are those that are thirsty for healing. The, one, the only ones I can really truly bless are those who are thirsty for a blessing. The only one that I can work in are those who are thirsty for me to do something for them. And so the message is, get a thirsty soul, right? We need to have a thirsty soul for the things of God, the Spirit, the living water, the truth, the heavenly things. We need to get thirsty for spiritual things. We, God, God can help us when we have a thirsty spirit. In Psalms 42, verse 1 and 2, listen to what he said here. He said, As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. And I love this. He said, My soul thirst. You see that? Right? He said, my soul thirsted for God. He had a thirsty soul. He said, my soul is, is like, I'm parched. God, I want more. <laughs> I want you, God. 
I'm thirsty for you in my life. He said, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When, I, when shall I come and appear before him? He didn't just want God. He wanted to be with God. He wanted to be in heaven. Amen. In Psalm 63, verse 1, he said, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. It's a thirsty soul. We've got to have a thirsty soul. When you have a thirsty soul, God can help you. God can bless you. God can do good things in your life. And that's his desire. But you have to have that soul that is thirsty. In the book of Revelation, the Bible said, he said, And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of life, the fountain of the water of life freely, even in heaven. Even in heaven, when we get to heaven, Jesus said, get thirsty for it. Amen. He said, even, this is Revelation 21, all the way to the end of the book. He said, even while we're there in heaven, he said, the thirsty soul, he said, you can come and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. From now in eternity, God wants us to have a thirsty soul. When you have a thirsty soul, God can help you. Amen. And God can bless you. And God wants to do all these things. And as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord, and we're going to prayer tonight or this morning. Just say, God, I just want to thirst for you. He said, if any man thirsts, let him come. Let him come. This is the one I can help. I can help those that are thirsty. I can help those that are hungry. I can help those that are longing for me. I can help those that want me. I can help those that are yearning for more of me in my life, more of me in their life. I can do something for them. This night, this morning, get a thirsty soul for the things of God. Amen. She's going to sing and please spend some time in prayer. Father, I preach your word about having a thirsty soul. I want to give you glory and praise. I pray that you will speak to every heart. Use your word for your glory in Jesus' name.
is Lord. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to be encouraged to be thirsty for God. He said, if you're thirsty, come, drink. I will give you what you need. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day today. Appreciate each and every one of you. And don't forget, well, first of all, for all of you online, God bless you. <laughs> Appreciate you all that worship with us this morning. We'll be back here tonight at 630. Join us and... Um, There'll be no Tuesday night Bible study, no Wednesday night service next week. We're going to a conference. It's in Memphis. Uh, Well, well, a different one, but I'm going to the one in Memphis. And so we'll be back here next week, though, um, Sunday. And, uh, oh, don't forget, I love all of y'all. Appreciate you. So that's it? Yeah, yeah, I love (laughs) y'all. Let's close the service in prayer. Father, we love you, appreciate you. Thank you for your goodness and mercy to us. Continue, God, to keep us by your spirit. Bring us back at the appointed time, God, to worship and glorify you. We thank you in Jesus' name.